What's up guys? Welcome to Anatomy and Physiology Lab 1. Now, this is going to be vastly different from what I would normally do in a regular semester. Uh, what I've done at this stage is I have built a um, nice PowerPoint that will reflect materials that I want you to know for lab. I have built a handout that represents the materials that I would like you to know from this lab. I've already uploaded those to Canvas. They are available to you. Uh, we will record this video of me explaining the lab materials that I would like you to be aware of. And uh, then there is going to be a quiz. I'm going to put a quiz up on the lab materials in Canvas that you can take. And I'm probably going to put a timer on it. The goal is that you have gone through all the lab stuff, you have a good idea of what's what, and then I'll put like uh, 10 questions in 10 minutes quiz up, so you need to have a good grasp of the lab materials before you take the quiz, or else you're not going to be successful on it. It's going to be one of those where it's going to be tough to look it all up. So try to actually learn the material prior to taking the quiz. Uh, don't just expect to be able to grab your phone and look through look through stuff and figure out what you need to figure out. Now I have left some things on the handout that we will not be doing. Like I left some uh, uh, microscope stuff on there just to give you a good idea of what I would ask in a normal semester. And um, like there are a couple terms for microscopes that you need to be familiar with, like working distance for example. And you need to be familiar with the microscope parts. Um, unfortunately you can't use a microscope, which is a real shame, and I'll be explaining that process to you though. Um, but you do need to know the parts. All right, all right, now, I will focus on the main stuff in this lecture. Let's talk about it, and away we go. Now, let me make another quick comment. <clears throat> this first lab is normally for sort of explaining the, the whole idea of the lab to people, where you find things, where to look for certain stuff, how to behave in lab, uh, we do a safety video, all that fun stuff. You'll find that some of these labs are very short. They're, they're quite concise because uh, what we try to do is I give you very little material to do for the lab and then you spend an hour or two working through it with your hands, seeing how it all fits together. So that doesn't convey well to an online style of lecture. What I'm going to try to do uh, as we progress is find some virtual stuff that you can do that'll make your life a little easier because I don't want you to be at a disadvantage compared to people that have taken the lab in person. So that's going to be happening as we progress. This first lab just doesn't convey well to that type of format. All right, first things first, anatomical position. Okay, anatomical position is standing up, palms facing forwards. Uh, this, this is how you will always reference the human body. Uh, we do this as a method of standardization so that any time we're talking about any structure on the body, like the head is always superior to the feet, even if you're hanging upside down, okay? Uh, you would say that the head is superior to the feet. You would say that the arms are lateral compared to the torso, which would be more medial. We use directional terms based off of anatomical position uh, for a method of standardizing things, okay? It's always about standardization. Uh, and we'll be talking about this as we progress, but like, for instance, your humerus, all right, in your arm, uh, or even your radius in your ulna, okay, uh, there are proximal ends and distal ends. It doesn't matter which orientation my arm is in, there's always going to be a proximal and distal end, which is always the same spots because of anatomical position. It's a method of standardization. We standardize things using anatomical position. We standardize things by using Latin. We standardize things by using the metric system. This is just how we do business. All right, these are general anatomical terms that you need to be familiar with moving forward. Uh, I will be using these constantly throughout this class. And if you're not familiar with them, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. So let's just run through these real quick and see if we can't make sense of them. Uh, superior and inferior are pretty obvious. Superior means above, inferior means below. Uh, you have a superior nasal conchi in, the t in your nose, like in the very top of your nose, and an inferior nasal conchi in the very bottom of your nose. Like th These are good terms to describe above and below something. Like my head is superior to my torso, my torso is superior to my legs. 
My legs are inferior to my torso, my torso is inferior to my head. Like, that's, you know, we can use these to describe parts and pieces all over the body. Uh, ventral and dorsal. Ventral means the, towards the front, whereas dorsal means to the back. The way I always think about this is fish have a dorsal fin on their back. You know, this is how this works. Uh, medial and lateral. So medial means towards a center line of the body, towards the middle. Lateral means towards the side. For example, if uh, as you sit there, if you look at your right leg and you just karate chop it right in the middle, okay, your thigh, right in the middle of your thigh, and you put your hand on top of there, right in the center, uh, what you're putting your hand on, on the center of your thigh, is a muscle called the rectus femoris. Okay, the rectus femoris. To the right, again, I'm on my right leg, to the right of that rectus femoris is a muscle called the vastus lateralis, and then towards the left of that is the vastus medialis. Okay, so we use these terms, we use these terms to describe bodily features, and you need to be familiar with them. Medial being towards the center line, lateral meaning toward the outside. Like, for instance, my torso is medial, my arms are lateral. Okay, uh, intermediate, eh, proximal and distal, this is better. All right, so proximal means close to the trunk of the body. For example, uh, these are the proximal epiphyses of my radius and my ulna. Okay, proximal, distal would be out towards the wrist. Okay, my distal epiphyses are out towards the wrist. So my elbow is proximal compared to my hand. My wrist is proximal compared to my fingers. My fingers are distal compared to my wrist. My wrist is distal compared to my elbow. All right, so proximal, close to the trunk of the body, distal, further away. All right, and then superficial and deep. Superficial simply means towards the surface, and then deep means deep. <laughs> so... The way you can think about this is my skin is superficial to my muscles. My muscles are superficial compared to my bones. My bones are deep compared to my muscles. My muscles are deep compared to my skin. All right, this is how this goes. All right, perfect. Perfect. Uh, these are some nice regional terms. Now, obviously, I am incredibly popular, okay? I am incredibly popular. All right, so um, regional terms. From this, what I want is you to just... This is terrible to say, but you, you need to learn these, man. You really need to learn these. Uh, I'm not going to probably give you a whole bunch of this type of stuff on a test. Uh, maybe one or two on your midterm. Maybe, maybe. But learning these now is going to just save the day when you're trying to learn muscle names and bone names and general structure names all across the body because they're all based off of these locational terms all right like uh let's do some for examples like mental like in the chin mentis is is your 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 mandibles down there all right anything mental so um your uh, mandible has a mental foramen they have two mental foramens on either side of your jaw um, let's see, oral, so you have a uh, orbicularis oris, oral, oris, uh, muscle, which is what makes your lips first, and same thing with orbital, so you have a, you have orbital notches and orbital fissures, you have orbicularis oris, um, eye muscles, I mean, you know, we use these terms all the freaking time, man, they're just everywhere, acromial, you have an acromial process on a bone right there, uh, brachial, this is where your biceps and triceps break, yeah. Where was I? Right. Um, where was I? Okay, so let's just see what else I've got labeled here. In carpal. So your carpal bones are in there. So you have um, like like flexor carpi bone or muscles down here that cross through the carpals. Yeah. So. Uh, all these terms. These are good terms. Knowing them will help. Am I just going to like put a sticker on a spot in uh, your lab midterm and say, what is this? It's mental? No, probably not. But learning these now, if your goal is to slack and just squeak through anatomy hoping for the best, then by all means skip this and know nothing. But um, if your goal is to learn and benefit and become a, a sharper scientist uh, person that is more knowledgeable about the world around them, you need to learn these terms, okay? 
uh, these terms are going to help us with everything we do as we move forward. Like for instance, in anatomy 2, you'll be talking about lymph nodes, and they're very important inguinal lymph nodes. All right, uh, learning these terms is going to help you. Okay, learning these terms is going to help. All right, body planes. So for my purposes, what I have here is sagittal, frontal, transverse, and we'll mention oblique. A sagittal section. Okay, a sagittal section. Here we have mid-sagittal. You got to think about this as like coming in through the nose and taking the whole left side of your body off. Okay, that is a nice sagittal, sagittal section. Like you can kind of see here, you can see the outline of the spinal cord. This is cut straight through. This is a CT scan. Uh, this is a sagittal section. So uh, you're looking at something kind of taking one side off of it so you can look in. Sagittal section. I'm not, I'm not worried about the, the bits and pieces. A frontal section, you got to think about this as taking the front of something off. Okay, the front is coming off. There's a nice frontal section. You can see the uh, openings for the lungs and you can see the heart there. This is taking the whole front of something away so that you can look in. Again, CT scans. And then there are transverse sections. Transverse sections are where you kind of take the top and the bottom apart from one another. Okay, you come in and you take the top off or the bottom off and you can look inside of there and see what you, what you see. Uh, understanding these sections is really going to help. It would really help if you were in person and I was describing to you how to do certain dissections and I said, going to take this structure, do a sagittal section and, and examine the internal bit. Yeah, yeah, it's unfortunately not going to be the case with us. But that's all right. You still need to know these names because you're going to be using them in the future. All right, body cavities. This is very, very important for us. We have a cranial cavity, which houses the brain, a vertebral cavity, which houses the spinal cord, a thoracic cavity, which houses the lungs and the heart, etc. We have a diaphragm here made out of skeletal muscle, which divides the top from the bottom. There's an abdominal cavity here, and then we have a pelvic cavity here. Abdominal cavity housing things like the, uh, the liver, the stomach, the intestines. Pelvic cavity housing reproductive organs, uh, kind of capped off like a cork by the bladder. All right, and we can further subdivide the thoracic cavity down into the right and left pleural cavities, pleural meaning lungs, and here in the center, pericardial. Now, you're, you're going to note that some of this is similar to what we've done in lecture. Uh, that is because these, <laughs> these are very important concepts, all right? This is important for lab and important for lecture, and you're going to see this on your lab test primarily. All right. Uh, speaking of which, here are serous membranes. So serous membranes, man, they are just so darn important. And I'm not going to harp on this endlessly because you've kind of already done it in lecture. The idea is that you have a serous membrane covering set for your major organs, like your heart. Okay, your heart has a parietal pericardium, which is on. No, 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 wrong. Your heart has a parietal pericardium, which is kind of attached to the wall of the body, forming a cavity. If the heart is not there, if the heart is taken out, the uh, parietal pericardium is still in the body. Okay, let me say it again. If you remove the heart, the cavity left behind where the heart used to be will be lined with the parietal pericardium. The visceral pericardium is on the heart itself, like skin on a grape. Okay, so you have this visceral pericardium on the heart, a parietal pericardium around the heart, and they form a gap between the two that fills with serous fluid, serous fluid, acts like a lubricant, so the heart can kind of move around. The lungs do this, the lungs have it called the uh, parietal and visceral pleura, uh, the abdominal organs do this, that would be the parietal and visceral um, peritoneum. All right, and uh, that's how serous membranes work. Again, I'm just not going to harp on this because you kind of did it in a lab, or a uh, lecture, rather. Right? Okay, quadrants and regions, quadrants and regions. We use this type of thing, okay, we use this type of thing to do triage. Let's say someone comes into the hospital like, oh, I hurt on my right side at the top. Well, oh, hang on. Well, you can be kind of sure, you know, what organs are associated with this area of the body. You can be kind of sure as to what the problem is. You need to be familiar with all the organs of the body and where they fall in terms of, and let me just be honest with you, where they fall in terms of the abdominal regions. Let's not worry too much about the quadrants at this stage. This is very simplistic. Uh, the more complicated variant of this would be the regions, and you need to be familiar with the regions. So here are all the major organs, and you can see which quadrant 
or let me rephrase, which region they fall into. Now let me go over these region names for you because they can get kind of questionable and you need to understand them. Okay, hypochondriac regions. Uh, this is called the costal cartilage of the ribs. And anything chondros means cartilage, so hypochondros, chondros, chondros. Hypochondriac means around the costal cartilage of the ribs. So these are the right and left hypochondriac regions. Here we have umbilical region for an obvious purpose. It's where your umbilical cord connected as a child. And then epigastric and hypogastric. <clears throat> Anything gastros means stomach. Now the stomach itself is here. But what you need to think of is this is the stomach. And epigastric is like upper stomach. And hypogastric is like lower stomach. Below and above the umbilical region. Right and left of the umbilical region are the lumbar regions. Uh, the way I think about this is that your lumbar vertebrae are right in this area. Okay. So right and left lumbar, and then at the base here we have right and left iliac regions. We call these iliac regions because they are basically associated with your <clears throat> iliac crests that come up and off of your pelvis. So this is named for pelvic regions. All right, good, good. Know the organs, know which region they are found in. And that takes us to organ systems. So we've already kind of done this in lecture. So I'm not going to harp on it endlessly. I'm just going to blaze a trail through for you one more time. You need to be familiar with the names of these systems. You need to be familiar with um, the basic organs that are associated. And you need to have a decent grasp of, of sort of what's happening here. Okay, what the functions are. <clears throat> All right, it's going to go as follows. We have the integumentary system. Main organs would be the stuff like the, the glands and the skin and all that fun stuff. And the goal is protection from a whole host of things. UV radiation, abrasion, uh, bacteria, you name it. Skeletal system. Bones. Okay. Uh, has a bunch of functions for you. Uh, protects the lungs and the heart. Houses the uh, brain. Provides fulcrum-like motion for muscles. Speaking of which, we have muscles. Uh, muscles are specialized to convert chemical energy into mechanical energy, basically. Muscles take ATP and make motion out of it, all right? And they also warm the body. The nervous system, made of the brain and spinal cord, allowing your body to perceive things in nature and then respond to them, perceive things internally and then respond to them. Your endocrine system is concerned with making hormones. Major organs here would be things like your uh, pancreas and your uh, testis and ovaries. And we have the cardiovascular system, parts and pieces, things like the heart and the blood vessels. And the goal here being to transport blood around the body. Here we have the lymphatic system. Now, I, I spoke at length about this, lymphatic and immune, in lecture. I'll just give you the dime tour. The idea here is this is going to be made up of spleen, your lymph nodes, your lymphatic ducts, uh, things called lacteals in your intestinal tract. And what the lymphatic system does is it collects, ex collects extraneous body fluid and prevents it from building up and then tests it for potential pathogens using the immune system. Um, so this system collects extraneous body fluid and then makes sure it's good and clean, make sure there's nothing in there that's not supposed to be there. Respiratory system, tracheal passages and lungs, uh, specialized for bringing in oxygen and releasing carbon dioxide. The digestive system, made of your esophagus and your stomach and your liver and your intestines, etc., uh, is good for bringing in food, digesting it away, and absorbing nutrients from it. Your urinary system filters the blood of nitrogenous waste. Filters the blood of nitrogenous waste amongst a variety of other things, but that's a good place to start. And then, of course, we have male and female reproductive systems. Main parts and pieces are obviously ovaries and testis. And uh, the main goal here is reproduction, making more of our species. Okay. And that's it. That's lab one, man. There's really not that much complexity. What you got to keep in mind is, again, in a regular semester, um, lab one is where we take care of all the bookwork. Okay, take care of all the little nuances that we got to take care of for you to do labs. So this lab simply isn't that long or complicated. All right, so uh, let's stop it there. Be expecting a quiz to pop up in relatively short order. And uh, next week I'll put up the next lab. And it's a little more complicated. So we'll go from there. Thanks, guys.